Okay. Hi guys. It's Alan and Tom. Gonna lower this down a little bit. Hi guys. It's Alan BB and uh I'm here interrupting my own video because uh, I used a camera that uh, didn't adequately uh, film and also the um, lens wasn't wide enough to capture everything and so I thought it needed a little extra um, commentary for people to understand what was going on in the film. I went ahead to try to get it out anyway, simply because I wanted to expedite uh, having it out there for people to reference. Um, in the process of that, I learned a whole bunch about, about how to use my uh, editing program and uh, adjusting sound and uh, a bunch of, bunch of things. So I think... All in all, it uh, is going to turn out to be positive because um, in the future, I'll use a better camera with a wider angle lens on it and uh, higher quality. And I'll be able to do this type of additional commentary when it's uh, needed and uh, beneficial. So, okay, let's get back to the to the video. I do a lot of him and and hon at the beginning. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's that's just me. Here we go. Let's get started. Got to try to explain triangle, circle, and square a little bit. Uh, Going to be really super stupid simple. Okay. Uh, so, um, so you'll notice that my arm is opening, is opening like that, at the bottom half of a square. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch this. This is just kind of rudimentary example, but we don't have, uh, triangle here yet. As I open my arm to make a, a triangle, okay, this starts to make a triangle. And, okay, so I have force along here, I have force along, it's hard to see, force along here, Force along here and then traveling across here. Almost immediately, you'll see that it connects and makes another force triangle. Okay, this one's way easier to see. So now I have force here, okay, and then force coming up here. And I'm going to make sure that there's a force connection into here by making sure that there's force coming through here, up here, and then now, now you start to see the connection into here, okay? And that's all through just this, just this motion, all right? And you can see this start to rotate, actually, you get a, a rotation, there's a radius here that turns, and then a radius here that turns, and then locks and becomes a triangle. And then a radius here that turns. Uh, yeah, I could keep turning it, but I'm also putting a rotation this way to cause a lock so I can get force into the shoulder there. All right. So now we have this triangle form. So I'm going to pause here for a second and point out the fact that um, when I have a triangle formed here, 
just like any other triangle, if you push on a corner of the triangle, it's going to affect the other two vertices or corners of the, of the triangle. Uh, I'm pushing down a little bit, and this corner is supported by the shoulder. It's anchored in there. Uh, and I'm pushing across. This shoulder isn't anchored this way. So that's where you get that movement across. Another little point I'll make while I'm here is that uh, you probably noticed that the square, the triangle, and the circle are all kind of occurring simultaneously. It's not like consecutively. Uh, they can seemingly operate consecutively, but really they're operating uh, simultaneously almost all the time. All right? All right. Let's keep going with the video here. Well, I want to keep moving that triangle. And how I'm going to move it, I moving it. I was moving it this way. Now I'm going to start to ro rotate it this way. And you'll notice that when this rotates, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it, but when it rotates, you get a whole new another triangle. All right, I'm going to stop here again. Uh, here's what I want to point out. Three points makes a plane, defines a plane. So when we have a triangle, we also have a plane. And when I rotate the triangle the second time, I'm rotating the plane. And, uh, and therefore, the triangle... I'm not trying to destroy the triangle. A lot of folks, when they do, uh, for example, a kote gaishi, they're twisting the forearm out of plane that they just set up, and it starts to destroy the triangle. It, it uh, creates some pain, but, uh, but it... Uh, kind of undoes everything that you've just created. So we don't do that. All right, let's keep going. Right in here. In fact, I can get it from here to here to his feet. Right there. Okay. Okay, I'm going to pause. Here to here to his feet is from his shoulder to his hip to his feet. But as that triangle forms, I get another triangle that comes in here and here and here. All right. You can't see it, but here and here and here is his hip to his knee to his ankle. And if I was to keep rotating that thing, it would keep locking in on itself until uh, Tom couldn't sustain himself and he'd fall down to the ground. Well, you don't need to see that. That's not what we're here for. Okay, so so that's that. Let's do this this other one. So so I'm going to turn this this way. So I'm doing the same kind. Of, these are just random, All right? I'm just trying to illustrate something. Okay, I'm going to pause here. Uh, so on Tom, when I did the the thing on Tom's uh, right arm, uh, his arm was uh, supinating. And uh, now I'm doing it on his left arm, and his arm is pronating. Uh, the, that's the two ways that the arms twist. And that tends to give rise to all of the techniques that generally involve the arms. The same thing can be applied to the leg, by the way. Um, that isn't so commonly seen in Aikido, but it's very common in Daito Ryu, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and the principles all simply apply to both. Uh, and then also these principles apply to uh, how the spine relates to the pelvis, relates to the legs. And uh, I'll just touch on that lightly a little bit later. So this is going to come in here, but, you know, he could actually almost close this. But I do it at off angle so that it doesn't like to close as much. 
And that way I have force here, I have force coming up here, and then I have a line coming now across here. And that makes a force triangle. Instead of pushing on that more, I'm going to allow that to rotate, okay? And you'll notice that my arm, I'm here again, my arm is just extending. So I'm doing this. My arm is just extending, okay? Okay, I'm going to pause here again and uh, see if I can get over here. Um, uh, I wanted to make a point that the shapes that I make in my body are what is tr being transferred to Tom's body. Uh, I'm not trying to control Tom's body, but Tom's body is connected to mine. And I control my body. I don't control his body. Uh, I can, when I control my body, his body reacts to that. And so uh, I, I can, it's kind of odd, but I can move my body in certain ways that will elicit the effect that I desire to have occur in Tom's body. But that's slightly different than saying, oh, I want to reach over and take control of your body. Because when I do that, I'm actually giving him my power, and I don't want to do that. I always just stay within myself and uh, balancing forces within myself. Okay. And now I have another triangle, okay? And this triangle, it's coiling up here, but I want force to there. So while that coils, I'm going to lift this a little bit. It's just another thing here. And that's going to get force into that shoulder. And there it is. Okay. Well, while I get force into that shoulder, now I have a whole other triangle down this side. Or actually, there's a real shallow triangle forming on that side. That's the side that I'm going to that I'm going to use that you you can't see very well. But uh, guess I'll we'll pause there and say that that triangle is from his shoulder to his hip to his leg, and uh, and as soon as I start to tilt that, it's going to break again, just like it did on the other side, and I'll get another triangle from his hip to his knee to his ankle. All I'm going to do is, knowing that that triangle exists, instead of pushing against it, uh, I know the point of the triangle is on the ground, so I'm going to rotate around that point, okay? And it just gets the whole thing to tip a little bit. And there's no pain involved in any of these. If he, uh, uh, like on this one, if he says, no, Alan, you can't fold my hand up and resists, let's just swell. <laughs> because then, then, so this is stiff now. So, poop, instant force triangle. And this went to here, but already I could feel it. It's going, oh, it's going to there now. Okay. And he says, oh, you don't lock that up, right? Oh, it'll instantly go to there. Okay? And as soon as it hits there, you even saw him take the step back. He's just locking shallow triangles up in his body. And all I'm doing, instead of pushing on if I pushed on it really hard, he would resist me. And then we'd have this stupid, like, thumb war thing going on here. But I'm I'm just I'm just rotating it off and making sure that whenever I put pressure in, it's going to the thing and then off. It's 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 orthogonal because I want to rotate I want to rotate the thing. Okay. And same thing here. If he wants to resist, well that's fine. You get that sort of thing. Okay, I'm gonna pause here. Just for a second, uh, I'm illustrating a point, and uh, and so I'm letting you know this tip and roll away, uh, which is something that you can do, and a lot of people choose to do that. 
Uh, for us, we're not, we don't do that. <laughs> so I, I take, when you, there's a rotation, there's always two sides to rotation. So uh, what I'm not showing here is that normally I would take the back half of that rotation and rotate it so that the, he comes spiraling around and uh, I want him at my feet somewhere uh, as opposed to rolling away. But uh, uh, that's neither here nor there. You do all of those with a triangle, circle, and square. Uh, it, it just travels into the body real, really easily. And uh, so those are some examples. You can do the exact same examples in the leg and then also in the body. So, for example, if we face each other this way and say I'm going to be judo guy and, and, and throw him, usually people don't stand up straight like this. They try to lower their center of gravity down. Well, here, let's knock the camera down. Here he's standing up. Now he lowers his center of gravity. Boom, instant triangle. So I got one nice huge triangle right there, okay? Uh, I keep making a mistake in saying triangle when I mean angle. Let me uh, point over here. So you see I have an angle. It's not a triangle yet. I'm going to show you how to uh, complete the triangles because I got one side, two sides. I don't have three sides yet. Uh, I'm going to uh, show you how to do that momentarily. But I keep uh, making that same mistake because I'm making the video. I, I get two angles and I call it a triangle because to my mind, uh, I can make a triangle out of that. So therefore, it's a triangle. He is running force up that leg and into here. Okay, So all I have to do is run force down there. And it doesn't have to be a lot. So all I'm going to do is, is attach here and go straight down, okay? And he will create the force triangle to support that because he doesn't want to go, you know, pass over the key So, So, boom, he lost. Uh, I'm going to pause here again and reiterate the point that, do you see, this triangle is outside of my body. Here's, here's for example, here's where my body ends uh, with this hand, all right? Uh, I'm not trying to get force over here and drop that down. But he's attached to me, I'm attached to him. You could do this same move without holding on, but uh, I said... Uh, I'm judo guy, and so uh, you know I was taught, you, you know, you have to you have to have your grip. So, so I took a standard grip, and uh, um, what I'm doing, as you can see, is dropping my body straight down. So I'm dropping my force straight down. It's going to have the effect of dropping this shoulder down. Now he's going to support that. So now you have a force coming down, and his. Uh, force coming up to support that, and that creates a really nice strong force line across here, creating the triangle. Box that, all right? Now the trick is, that's fine, now how am I going to move that, that triangle, right? And you move it one of the ways that we talked about. I mean, uh, there's three vertices, so you, I can rotate on either of those vertices, or I can rotate around the center of the thing, right? Even better still is to get the whole thing to spiral. I think it's still. I'm gonna go here, and I can just say I'm gonna rotate around this vertice, so there it goes that way, right? I'm gonna rotate around this vertice, so there it goes that way, okay? I'm I can pause here. Uh, I'm showing those as examples of how you can uh, rotate around that. I'm not recommending that you do that. Uh, that uh, happens all the time when you're doing in judo. They're, you know, judoka really used to that and really used to adapting to that. It's not like they're going to stand there and let you take their balance. 
Uh, so uh, I'm just using that as an illustration. As a matter of fact, when I go on to the next part as well, I'm not claiming that any of this is going to like work magically and you're going to be able to defeat anybody, particularly uh, good judoka. The good judoka, are, they're, they've trained every class to retain their center of balance. They're, they're not giving that away. They don't train to give their center of balance away. So, uh, uh, you know, you shouldn't uh, delude yourself into thinking, well, gee, I'm going to learn some magical technique and then I'm going to be invincible with regard to people who train hard. No, that's not the case. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to gain some advantages but there is no such, there's no magic bullet or pill that's going to make you invincible. I'm going to do both at the same time, and so there's that one. Okay. And uh, okay, and uh, what you just saw there was me bent over, and my head is out of line with my spine. And uh, I'm going to go, I'm just leaving that in there, but don't do that. Uh, I will try not to do that in the future. Uh, that is a big no-no. That that is that's putting a, a triangle that can be manipulated in to your own body for no good purpose, and also reducing your power. Don't do that. All I'm doing with my arms is this. Remember when it's not just my arms; it's always your your uh, legs. And I don't like personally. I don't like to do doubles where I'm going to go. I'm going to rotate this way, so I'm going to collapse these and collapse these. Uh, you'll notice it's not just my legs. I said the legs. Uh, I have a triangle in my legs. I have a triangle in my arms, but also there's the relationship between the uh, spine and the uh, femurs. Uh, they're moving as well. Expand these and expand these. So I'm going to collapse one, and I'm going to expand the other, okay? And that's fine. So now I have more acute triangles. I have triangles all over his body. Uh, but they're locked up again. So I'm going to move myself so that I can continue to rotate them. And then we can do that. Okay, so that ends uh, one of the w more wacky videos that I've made. <laughs> it was a learning journey, and uh, um, I just wanted to get it out there so to give people a chance to have some conception of what I'm talking about when I'm doing triangle, circles, and squares uh, with regards to body movement. Um, uh, you know, there will be other videos in the future. Uh, I might relate them to common techniques that people are familiar with. I'm a little hesitant to do that simply because people are so into technique and that isn't what this blog is about. Uh, so, um, for example, I showed one technique on this blog so far, and it by far is the one that's gotten the most views. So if I wanted a whole bunch of views, I'd just put out a whole bunch of technique. Um, but that's not what this blog is about. Uh, so thank you for your patience uh, with my learning curve. And uh, hopefully this video will, I don't know, be somewhat informative uh, for you. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Thank you.